Hey everybody, Bill in Virginia. Welcome back. So picking up where I left off on the last video in that I'm going to get these two trees done and then I'm going to get the water poured in the river for this particular episode. What I'm doing right now is I have just drilled a uh, like 1 16th inch uh, hole in the bottom of this pine tree, which, uh, you know, you got to be careful. But with the core of wire in the uh, grapevine wire, you know, you can kind of see it here. I've still got to add more glue and, and more texture, but it wraps around. So you've got a spot where you can drill into it. This one, I've got the hole drilled, and you can see it's drilled into the dowel that I put around the core of this tree because it's bigger around. So rather than use a lot of wire, I just put a you know, 3 8 inch uh, wood dowel, about a two inch chunk in here to kind of build up the frame around it. I will super glue in just a nail that I cut the head off of uh, so that these will go in. And then I'm ready to start getting super tree material out and figure out what looks good for these. Now I have not gone to get uh, the uh, blended grass mix yet. I ended up making my own. So I got looking and I had a variety of Woodland Scenics greens from burnt grass to weed to just green. And uh, a little bit of mix with some of the uh, yellow that I'd added in the lower trees. You can see the little specks of yellow in there. Blended it together and I like the color. It should make for some nice trees, which down by a river, they should stay even a brighter green than ones higher up because they've got plenty of moisture. So this is gonna be the cover material. So I'm gonna get started and I'm going to get the nail in. I'm gonna come back in with some additional glue on at least the trunk so I can get those uh, covered up better before I get started on the super tree material. But uh, the next piece of this, I should have the trunks pretty well done. Uh, should have shrink tubing in place and getting ready to start building the tree out. So making some more progress here in the afternoon. I've got more Woodland Scenics ground cover brown on the trunks and I think that's good enough for what I'm going to do for these. I've got the heat shrink tube just set over what's going to be my uh, branches of each tree. And then I've got one just stuck in. I've not glued it yet. So I'm going to get my uh, soldering iron heated up and I will start gluing in the uh, branches for the tree that are behind it and then uh, do the heat of the heat shrink and work my way down the tree. I find that's easier if I start at the top and then go down. Uh, you know, I'm not sticking my hands uh, in where branches already are. Uh, it just makes it less likely that I'm going to break something. So. I'll uh, come back after I get these in place and you'll see what this tree looks like for shape. Basic shape of the two trees is now done. I will uh, get some glue out and paint the trunks and sprinkle on some additional ground cover. But it's still kind of early in the evening. If I can get this done in the next 15, 20 minutes, I might be able to paint and I I might be able to get these in position yet tonight. We'll, uh, we'll see how it goes here. So I've got the glue on and I've got the Woodland Scenics material added. I will let this sit for about an hour and then I will take it out or take them out and paint them. These will be uh, painted more of a brown, like a, maybe a satin kind of a color. Um, it'll be the two-in-one primer finish uh, rattle cans. Uh, I can get this stuff done. I don't have to spray it, you know, everywhere because the color on the trunks is kind of a cool color. So it can bleed through by just giving the trunks a light coat. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to be able to get these trees pretty much done yet tonight. Um, won't take long and uh, I'll have them painted. And then I can go right into the other stuff because the paint dries like within minutes. Trees have been painted. I'll let this dry for just a few minutes. And then I'm going to come in and uh, put the uh, foliage on. 
So I should have these on the layout here in probably the next 15, 20 minutes. But after the paint job, the trees look nice. You know, nice old trees, bumpy, rough areas where branches have broken off over the years. Yeah, I like this. It's an easy way to make nice looking trees. It just does not take long to do. So next uh, video segment, we'll show them done. And a uh, segment after that on the layout. Well, ready to put these on the layout. I think they look pretty good. Turned out well. So let's see if the spots that I've chosen for them fit. All right, trees are in place. I like how they look. Yeah, that's gonna work. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to be adding additional uh, hand-planted grass tufts in a few areas down here in and around some of the trees, as well as in that area up around the base of that tree. And then I'm ready to do the water scene. So I think that's gonna happen tomorrow after work, or at least uh, get it prepped and then uh, either do it tomorrow night or do it Saturday. So we're getting close. This has been fun. I like doing this. So just a shot down low. Trees look good in that area. Fill it in. They don't block the trestle. They don't block the rock face. So I'm just about ready for the water feature. Like I noted in the last segment, I'm gonna put some grass in and some other detail. And then uh, I will get uh, the water going. But going from down low, up high. That is a lot of vertical separation in a short distance. I gotta love model railroading. This is fun. All right, Friday night, and I have my last little bits of grass tufts added in that I'm gonna put down here. So uh, you can see some wet glue there by the roots of the big tree. Nice shade under that tree. I will start to get the uh, form put into place next. So I've been watching a lot of YouTube and reading up on it, so sounds like blue painter's tape it doesn't stick to so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a piece of blue painter's tape across here and over here and then trim it to uh, basically form fit the contour that I have here now I already have blue painter's tape on my acrylic form so I will take that after I get this tape on put it in place and then clamp it so that I got a nice tight fit along my fascia and then I'm going to come back in with a toothpick and full strength white glue and then put just a very 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 thin continuous bead of white glue on top of essentially that layer of blue tape that I put on here and then uh, let that dry overnight and tomorrow at some point during the day I should be ready to pour so uh I will get uh, the next stage of construction underway and then take a little bit more video and show you what I'm doing. So just a few minutes later and I have my form in place. I did come in and put the blue painter's tape along the edge, like I said, and then I trimmed that. You can actually see the outline, uh, like the shadow on the other painter's tape. And then uh, the other painter's tape with the uh, not sticky side uh, out on the acrylic uh, sheet and now I'm going to get uh, my white glue and just a little applicator a little stick something so that I can put just a minuscule bead of glue between the scenery and the blue painters tape uh, what I might actually do is once I get that on 
maybe add in uh, a little bit more uh, scenery if I get any, or a little bit more, uh, yeah, scenic materials. If I can't get a very tight seam and I get what looks like spillage so that it doesn't look like crap <laughs> when I pour. But uh, I did check the level of the table because my garage does have a slope. So going uh, this way, I'm really quite level. Going the other way, I'm going to have to check it again, but it looked like my bubble was pretty, pretty close to the center. So, you know, just a hair off on that small of an area is not going to make a problem for me. You know, another one of those famous last words. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to get it sealed up here in a little bit and then uh, should be ready to do the pour tomorrow. I've got uh, some materials that I bought when I was doing the end scale layout. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, part A and B. It's been around for a while, but it should be should be more than enough to do this little scene on the layout. So we'll find out here after a bit. So I've got my little bead of glue in there. And it looks like I've been able to get it continuous throughout. So tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to pour it. We'll uh, see what happens here. The glue has set up nicely. I've got my uh, materials ready. Let's make some water. All right, I've got my first pour ready to go in. So we'll see. Unfortunately, this is full of air bubbles, so I will get my little heat gun and be ready to uh, take care of that. This is some older material here, so I'll just kind of ease it in around the rocks. This stuff says put it in in about quarter inch pours, or eighth inch actually, and then uh, let it sit for about four hours before putting the next one on. So I will follow that advice. I'm gonna let it sit in here a little bit, let it find its, find its own level. And then uh, I will get out my little Bic lighter and start to debubbleize it. So far, no leaks. See the bubbles are working out already. See a lot of little itty bitty ones popping at the surface, which is perfect. All right. We'll uh, work on debubbleizing that next. Let me get my tool and then uh, we'll show another little segment here. All right, a few minutes later and uh, it's reached sort of its natural level in there at this point. Been uh, taking my uh, Bic lighter and once in a while going over because I got way too many micro air bubbles uh, in the mix that I did and I'm not sure exactly what I did wrong, probably a little bit too aggressive with the stir. Uh, it was definitely not like baking a cake and mixing it up. However, I got a lot of little air bubbles and I'm getting a lot of popping using a toothpick to kind of swirl just a little bit, especially just along this side where it's the deepest. A little bit over an eighth of an inch, uh, so a little bit exceeding what they're recommending for the uh, 
each pour. But I'll keep working it for a while. I'll get most of it done. And if it's a little cloudy on the edge, that's okay. That's kind of deeper water anyway, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. But I'll get, uh, get it as much as I can to look like right in here, which is a nice look. And then the next pour that will go on top of it, I'll be a little bit more careful with my stirrer. And it uh, could even be that the next pour might be it. Uh, that should get it up more into the rocks along the edge and kind of around these rocks and then just a little higher on these rocks. So uh, I'll keep working this a little bit. And then uh, in the afternoon, about mid-afternoon, I will uh, be able to uh, come back in and do the second pour. I said wait at least four hours in between the pours, so I will wait four hours, maybe a little longer. <laughs> so more to come after a while. Later Saturday afternoon, and the second pour is in place. I waited, oh, I don't know, it was like five hours. You could see, and I had used a toothpick on the first pour, and the first pour was setting up. Uh, still, uh, still a little soft, but it, it was firm. Uh, so, second pour is in place. I've been running it over with a heat gun every once in a while just to get rid of uh, little air bubbles. Got most of them out, still a few more, so I'll kind of watch it for a while and then uh, just let it sit, let it do its thing. And tomorrow, test it, see if I've got uh, set resin, which I'm hoping I mixed it up in correct proportions. And if I do, then I'm good. I can uh, come back in, remove the forms, and finish off this scene down here. And then uh, start going on to something different. But uh, we'll check back tomorrow after it sets and see how it looks. Saturday night and things are setting up. And I've got a couple of figures here. A guy taking a photograph of a gal standing next to the big tree. I will wait tomorrow, maybe even the next day before I take the forms off. I want to make sure that it is fully cured. I did come back in and I put a little top coat on. I added a little bit of acrylic paint. Uh, just some of that uh, hammered iron. Just like one drop and then just a little bit more. Just to make the water actually look a little murky. So you can see that. that get a little bit farther out. You can still see the bottom, you can still see rocks, but it's not crystal clear. You know, there's not not many rivers where the water is really clear. You get up closer to the shore and the effect is pretty good because you can still see pretty clear to the bottom. So, you know, most rivers you walk out, they start to turn a little bit of a different color. So we'll see how that all looks once everything is fully cured and I take the forms off, but uh, the scene's coming along nice. So happy with how it's looking here. Sunday morning, and just checking on this, and success. I will let it sit until late this afternoon before I take the form off. That way everything has had a minimum of 24 hours uh, to cure. Uh, some of the bottom stuff, it's already been 24 hours. The middle layer, it's about 20 hours. Top layer, it's been maybe 16, 15 hours. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> anyway, let this sit for just a little while longer and then uh, take the form off and see what else I got to do. So here is how that scene looks. I am pretty much done with it. I will uh, go get some uh, Mod Podge with uh, like a gloss finish and I will add a few little ripples and just a few little uh, trailers around some of the rocks just to show that there is some current moving. Nothing major. I mean, just minimal highlights. But it came apart. It pulled from the form really well. Had to do some sanding on the edges to uh, get rid of the vast majority of the blue tape, uh, a little bit of it got incorporated. You can see a little bit of a hint of it, like right there in the center of the frame right now. But the water looks a little murky. When I get the uh, 
uh, when I get the Mod Podge, I will paint the uh, exterior, uh, the face that's along the fascia, a little bit with that. That should bring back the uh, ability to look in. So, uh, overall, yeah. My little water scene right there on the corner turned out well. So, with that, the uh, majority of the major scenery work is done on the layout. I will uh, go over and start working on the center module, again on the other side of the ridge over there. And there I'm gonna be doing some scratch building and I'm gonna be building up some, uh, some kits and some other things to uh, work that scene. But uh, the bulk of the big stuff is done. I'm happy with this. This is fun. I'm going to be uh, getting it set up and doing a lot of operation here fairly soon. But uh, enjoy the fruits of my work and then uh, get started on some of the other pieces. So with that, keep having fun on your layouts. Until next time.